influenza is causing great morbidity and mortality worldwide. Uh, with the WHO estimation of about half a million to a million people succumbed uh, to influenza infection every year, uh, causing associated complication including pneumonia and also underlying cardiovascular diseases and stroke. So it is very important for us as uh, ID physician uh, to encourage our patients to undergo influenza vaccination by prevention and also to have look at new ways uh, in antiviral treatment for the influenza infection, especially for those who are immunocompromised and elderly patients. For vaccination, for influenza vaccination, we face uh, several challenges. Those challenges including this, this currently there are poor uptake in certain countries uh, among the at-risk individuals, especially among the elderly and also some of the immunocompromised patients. Uh, and also there's the problem uh, with underuse of the influenza vaccination among our healthcare workers. So we have to put a lot of effort in order to increase the vaccine uptake in these at-risk individuals and also among our healthcare workers in order to prevent influenza infection uh, in our population. Uh, furthermore, there is, as we know, that there is immunosenescence among the elderly population who received the influenza vaccine. Uh, and as a result, the antibody generated is not protective uh, or wane as time goes on. So it is important for us as ID physician and the scientists to look at new ways, novel ways to improve the immunogenicity of the influenza vaccine. And certainly there are ways to improve the immunogenicity uh, by adding adjuvant, like ASO3, or perhaps by the intradermal vaccination, or with the use of the topical treatment like imicomo before the vaccination. And these strategies are important, especially during endemic period, where there's a new uh, influenza virus, uh, and that we have to give the vaccine, uh, uh, generating the immunogenicity within a very short period of time. Uh, and also for intradermal vaccination, there's also a dose-bearing effect so that the amount of vaccine antigen needed is much less uh, than those without using the, intra or with the conventional vaccination. For other, uh, including the antiviral treatment, it is also very important for our patients who unfortunately come down with the influenza infection and who develop very severe diseases who require hospitalization and also uh, intensive care. Uh, currently, the uh, only uh, effective antiviral treatment is with oxytamivir and sanamivir, and uh, these agents sometimes are limited by the optimal period, uh, and most of the time, those severe cases, when they come in, is beyond the 48 hours period for optimal usage in this antiviral. So we must look at other ways to improve the uh, antiviral effect, and one way of doing it is to give a combination of antiviral treatment uh, in order to uh, treat these severe cases. Uh, and another way, of course, is to give convalescent plasma or IVIG, which contain antibodies to influenza uh, infection or the influenza viruses. Uh, nevertheless, there are limitations in terms of the convalescent plasma uh, and IVIG, which takes time to prepare, and also it is very expensive. So uh, there are other ways, of course, is to look at to, uh, and explore new antiviral treatment that can be used in these severe cases. Uh, and also with the use of ECMO support, we will be able to prolong the, uh, the lives of this individual and giving chance for the antiviral to work on these individuals so that to enhance the survival in these patients. So overall, it is important as ID physician or as a scientist to look at different ways to improve the immunogenicity of vaccine uh, and also to look at new ways of giving these antiviral. Hopefully with these strategies, we'll be able to prevent influenza infection and able to treat uh, those severe cases that require hospitalization and intensive care.